About once a week on Sundays, I do something I try my best to avoid. Open Twitter, and I know you're probably clutching your pearls, gasping, begging, no pleading to know why I would submit myself to such torture, and there's only one word to answer that question. The guy she was interested in wasn't a guy at all, and right now you're probably thinking two things. One, damn that was a long title, and two, I thought you said one word, and I know, dear viewer, there is a lot going on right now. I'm confused too, but don't let the title or my stupidity deter you from this video because today I have one goal, and that is to convince you to read this manga. It's been about two years since I found this story. I was mindlessly scrolling on my free page, you know, as one does when the bright green accents caught my eye and I was immediately hooked. After using my inductive and deductive reasoning skills, an immense amount of research, hiring a PI, and taking my ADHD medication because TikTok has damaged my attention span to a point of utter disrepair, I finally, finally found the title and headed straight over to Dynasty Reader like the loser I am, prepared to throw away a good chunk of my day catching up to the story, only to realize that at that point the manga was only six chapters in and each chapter only has four pages. Devastation. But. I am a saintly and benevolent being because at the time of recording, there are currently two volumes, 72 chapters, and additional chapters and content from the first volume, and more content on the way. So you're welcome. And right now you might be thinking to yourself, why are they so confident in the story? I never said I was going to read it, and to that I say, I am reading your mind right now and I know you will enjoy this story, and also, I know what you did. The guy she was interested in wasn't a guy at all, or T.G. Swiwaga, I'm definitely calling it T.G. Swiwaga from here on, is amazing. Initially released on Twitter in April of 2022, the story focuses on our two main characters and the misunderstanding their relationship is built on. Now, I want you to close your eyes and imagine being in high school again. I know, it's horrifying, but please stop screaming. Okay, so you're in high school and one day you walk past a CD shop you've never seen before, but they're playing some of your favorite songs so you decide to go in. And behind the counter is someone who is just your type, mysterious, fashionable, and shares your love for music. And you begin to frequent that store hoping to get that person to notice you. And every time you do, you go to school the next day and tell your friends. Now, unbeknownst to you, you have an unattended audience, the quiet girl who sits right next to you. The girl who happens to have an after school job at her uncle's CD shop. The girl who conceals her identity at this job to avoid awkward interactions with schoolmates. You are Uso Aya, she is Mitsuki Koga, and she is not a guy at all. And Wait, I'm just now realizing that I never told you to open your eyes again, but if your eyes were really closed this entire time, I just, I don't know, you're weird. Anyways, this manga rocks in more ways than one. It's surprising, honestly. Even with only four pages a week, I was instantly endeared to these characters. I'm genuinely ready to ride out for them. To anyone who dares slight them, your days are numbered. But seriously, Koga and Aya are similar in a lot of ways, and the way that they are able to share their love for rock music with each other is just, mwah, chef's kiss, magnifique. They both believe they are slightly out of sync with the rest of the world and find it hard to fully connect with their peers, but in finding each other, they realize the value of sharing your loves and passions with other people. They bring light and color into each other's lives in so many different ways. Koga is misunderstood. Her classmates believe her to be a quote, anime otaku, assuming she is shy and awkward and likely very smart due to this reservation. And see, that's where they're wrong. She's a dumbass. Like, actually. Jokes aside though, Koga is much more than her surface level appearance. In truth, she is quiet, but that doesn't mean she isn't interesting, friendly, fashionable, cool, and accidentally flirtatious. It's just that Koga is only particularly moved by music, it being the biggest driving force in her life. The only thing that makes sense and is certain. And yes, I said accidentally flirtatious because she does it a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot. But if you think the story is nothing more than a slice of life romance, you'd be wrong. I mean, these bitches listened to Mitski and Radiohead. Did you genuinely think for one moment that they were completely mentally well? And yes, this is an official playlist. Go check it out. I'll wait. For me, this type of misunderstanding trope tends to get annoying, but that's never the case with this manga. Koga thinks about her situation logically and tries to put an end to it early, but time and time again she fails and accidentally draws Aya in further. They form a real believable connection, Koga finally finding someone she can call a friend. This is why this misunderstanding never felt like it overstayed its welcome. It made sense. Without the persona of Aya's crush, Koga couldn't see why anyone would want to spend time with her, let alone the popular girl. And Koga didn't want to lose this friendship. She's holding on to her introverted nature and being led by the preconceptions she had about Aya. Now, Aya is an interesting case. Initially, I made the mistake of underestimating her character much like Koga did. I assumed that what I saw in the first few chapters was all I was going to get. But the author, who is Arai Sumiko, by the way, go check her out on Twitter quickly shows us how similar our main two characters really are. 
Aya is also burdened by isolation, feeling that there are parts of herself that are better left hidden. The author sidesteps another pitfall of this trope by not making the character who has the misunderstanding look a little... How do I say this politely? Not smart. I never felt this way with these characters though. In fact, Aya starts to piece things together pretty quick. So it's never a situation of Aya being painfully oblivious and Koga just having her team rocket disguise on. Whoa. I love these characters and the supporting cast is also great. My personal favorites are Joe and Naruto. Joe is Mitsuki's doting uncle who introduces her to the music and the style she loves. They are two peas in the pod and he sees a lot of his younger self in her, which is adorable but also a bit worrying for him. He was someone who became so fully consumed in his passion for music that he ended up drifting away from potential opportunities and the people he cared about and he doesn't want the same to happen for his niece. Naruto is one of the girls' classmates who was like a jerk for two chapters before becoming their number one wingman. He's just an audience stand-in of sorts who hopes these two can work through their feelings for each other. There's multiple times he tries to get Uso to see what he sees between her and Koga. He's a true hero. Anyways, I don't want to go into too many specifics in this video because if you couldn't already tell, I really do want you to give this manga a chance, but I'm loving the seeds the author is planning to develop this story. Koga's character in particular resonates with me a lot, especially with the characters entering their last year of high school. As of right now, I'm also in a transitional period in my life. And yeah, it's hard. There's a struggle between finding who I want to be and being who people expect me to be. And it's even harder when I can only seem to find real joy in things that are usually overlooked by others, but I'm excited to see where her character goes from here. Maybe it'll help me figure some of my own shit out. Rock is a genre that I thought I had pegged. I usually list it as a genre I avoid if someone asks, but while writing this script, I've been listening to that official playlist I mentioned earlier, and I'm sure it sounds a little cliche to admit, but I really do feel like this manga has opened me up to a whole new genre of music. Maybe someday soon, I'll be able to sing I Love Rock and Roll and Mean It. Thanks for watching. Bye.